Day 720 of the Trump administration. Day 19 of the government shutdown, and there is no sign of a way out as talks collapsed again today. Tomorrow, the president travels to the U.S.-Mexico border to make his case once again for a wall, or what he now refers to as a barrier of steel slats. The meeting at the White House came to an abrupt end when the president left the room. Both parties then rushed to the microphones in the White House driveway to give their own after-action reports. It's cold out here, and the temperature wasn't much warmer in the Situation Room. The president walked into the room and passed out candy. Our meeting did not last long. I asked him to open up the government. The president then turned to the speaker and politely asked her, OK, Nancy, if we open the government up in 30 days, could we have border security? The Speaker of the House said no. A few minutes later, he sort of slammed the table. Nobody slammed their hand on a table. We saw a temper tantrum because he couldn't get his way, and he just walked out of the meeting. At that point, I think the president thought there was no longer any reason to be talking at this meeting. I think the president made his position very clear today that there will be no deal without a wall. It went on like that for a while. The president offered his own account of the failed negotiations, writing this. Just left a meeting with Chuck and Nancy, a total waste of time. I asked what is going to happen in 30 days if I quickly open things up. Are you going to approve border security, which includes a wall or steel barrier? Nancy said no. I said bye-bye, nothing else works. There are no new meetings scheduled. Late this afternoon, the House started voting on separate bills to try to reopen separate parts of the government. Eight Republicans crossed over and joined Democrats to pass one bill to reopen Treasury, keep the IRS running in advance of tax season. However, the shutdown is also testing Republican unity in the Senate. Today, the president went there to try to keep that team together. One Republican senator, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, told reporters she did, in fact, challenge the president. I did suggest that there was some separation in terms of how long the, uh, uh, the shutdown would continue, that, that folks are impacted, whether they're in the state of Alaska or, or wherever around the country. Were you happy with how the meeting went? Uh, the meeting with the president? Mm -hmm. um, I wish that we had had a little more clear direction as to how we're going to get there. Trump himself was asked about the lawmakers who questioned his strategy. Did any Republicans today in that meeting tell you that they want you to pursue a different strategy, that they want you to reopen the government? Uh, we talked about, a couple talked about, you know, a couple uh, talked about strategy, but they're with us all the way. The Republicans are totally unified. Why not declare a national emergency? Well, I may do that at some point. One of the president's best friends in the Senate, South Carolina Republican Lindsey Graham, has formed a new working group to find a way to end the shutdown. Tonight, he sat down with several senators from his party and Jared Kushner, but no Democrats. There's a process maybe that will pay dividends in making sure the president gets his border security funding and can add some things to the mix that would draw some bipartisan support. And I'm somewhat hopeful that maybe there's a way to get what the president wants in a fashion that would do the least amount of damage to the country as possible. Note there, he switched to calling it border security funding. The president's inability to reach an agreement here to reopen government lies in stark contrast to his self-professed negotiating ability, which he touted in his book, The Art of the Deal, as well as on the campaign trail. There's nothing wrong with walking. Some of the best deals I've ever made, I've walked away from like four times, okay? Like, bye, bye, bye. Who read the art of the deal, everybody? Remember this, when you negotiate, you always have to be prepared to walk away. At some point, you have to be able to walk away, or you can't make a good deal. You may have to say to him, I'm sorry, no good. By the way, the next day, you'll probably get a call. Come on back, and let's keep negotiating. And we found this exchange, which you may remember from exactly one year ago to this very day. Trump hosted the congressional leadership. He sounded briefly like a full-on Democrat on the topic of immigration and had to be warned by a fellow Republican at one point not to agree with Dianne Feinstein. I feel having the Democrats in with us is absolutely vital because this should be a bipartisan bill. This should be a bill of love. Truly, it should be a bill of love, and we can do that. If you want to take it that further step, I'll take the heat. I don't care. I don't care. I'll take all the heat you want to give me. 
And I'll take the heat off both the Democrats and the Republicans. My whole life has been heat. What about a clean DACA bill now? I have no problem. I, I think that's basically what Dick is saying. We're going to come out with DACA. We're going to do DACA. And then we can start immediately on the phase two, which would be comprehensive. Would you be agreeable Mr. to that? Yeah, I would like, I would like to. President. Go ahead. No, Mr. Wait, wait. I think a lot of people would like to see that. Wait. But I think we have to do DACA wait, first. Mr. President, Mr. President you, you need to be clear, though. I, I, think, I think what's... Senator Feinstein's asking here, Please. when we talk about just DACA, we don't want to be back here two years later. No, you I have to have security, as the secretary would tell you. But I think that's what she's saying. No, I think no, well, no, no, I think she's saying something different. What do you think I'm saying? I'm thinking you're saying DACA without Please. security. A year ago today, and with that, let's bring, off, uh, bring in our panel for a Wednesday night. Robert Costa, national political reporter for The Washington Post, moderator of Washington Week on PBS. Kimberly Atkins, Washington bureau chief for the Boston Herald and an MSNBC contributor. And Jill Colvin, White House reporter for the Associated Press. Good evening and welcome to you all. Uh, hey, Robert, there is a deeply cynical scenario circulating in Washington tonight that calls for the following events to happen. President flies to the wall tomorrow, declares the state of emergency that was not in his speech last night. Some folks saw the White House counsel has been manifested for the Air Force One flight, wondered why he'd need a lawyer on the trip. State of emergency gets kicked immediately to the courts. The president's able to say to his base, look at me, I declared this a state of emergency after all. Senate votes, government reopened by the weekend. Your thoughts? At this point, talking to White House officials tonight, it is true the new White House counsel will be traveling with the president to the border. At the same time, the, the debate inside of the West Wing remains active about whether the president will actually choose to declare a national emergency in order to take unilateral action. Working with the White House counsel and others, he's trying to explore other options. Why is that? Because he's being advised that if he does declare a national emergency, not only will it be challenged in the courts, but many conservatives in the Republican Party will question this use of executive power. So you're right, Brian. Based on my reporting, he's looking for an out. He's looking for a way to signal to the base he's going to the brink. But he's not yet totally certain on doing that national emergency. And your reporting on the walkout today, Robert, was it professional wrestling or was it Ali Frazier or even Ali Norton? I'd perhaps use the phrase political theater. This is a president who believes he needs to show as much as negotiate. He needs to show the Republican Party that he's not going to take anything but a border wall. Uh, but the real story are the negotiations on Capitol Hill. His son-in-law, Jared Kushner, trying to see if there's a way to get a wall in exchange for DACA, which the administration has talked about before. Uh, but the principles, the Speaker Pelosi, Leader Schumer, Leader McConnell, uh, they're, they're at this point not in any kind of intense negotiations with the president because he is more immersed in the sale to the country and the theater of it all. Kim, according to your reporting, is there an off ramp? Is there a breaking point? Is there an upper hand to be had here? Um, it's really tough uh, for the president right now because he has uh, sort of boxed himself in, as you pointed out. Even if the off-ramp is the declaration of this state of emergency, you do have some Republicans who don't like the idea of expanded executive authority. If you recall, with the last president, that was one of the things that they complained about the most, and it puts them in a position to have to try to back up this president when he's essentially doing uh, the same thing. Uh, I think Donald Trump maybe underestimated how difficult it would be to wage this this battle for the wall now that Democrats are in control of the House. I think he actually believed that he could move them uh, by demanding the wall or the steel structure or something else enough, and they have remained unified uh, in opposition to that, while at the same time Republicans are beginning to peel as we get to the point where, at the end of the week, people will stop. 800,000 federal workers will stop getting paychecks. You have folks like the National Guard going without pay. Uh, it, it's a terrible look. You have people talking about how that's affecting them, people not having the services that they need at this point. It's really putting more pressure on Republicans. So it's hard to see exactly where he goes without facing some sort of backlash somewhere. Uh, hey, Jill, according uh, uh, to, uh, well, uh, uh, along the lines of those 800,000 Americans, you know this already. I want to share it with our audience. This is the president talking today about those federal workers. They all get their money. They're all going to get the money. And I think they're going to be happy. And you take a look at social media. So many of those people are saying, it's very hard for me. It's very hard for my family. 
But, Mr. President, you're doing the right thing. Get it done. So, Jill, you heard him say a lot of them are going to be happy. The optics, however, continue to look bad for the White House. Absolutely. Look, this is a president who really seems to assess public opinion based on this echo chamber of his Twitter feed. He'll pull up his phone, maybe look at his mentions and see that people are congratulating him. Well, that's because many of the people who follow the president are supporters of his. Uh, this is a situation that is going to be increasingly difficult with more and more pressure placed on the president as people across the country really begin to feel the impact of this shutdown. I think it's unclear from some of the early polling now whether it'll wind up that the American public will blame the president um, or whether they at some point will start to also uh, attribute some of the blame to Democrats here, just feeling like, why can't Congress get along, feeling like everyone in Washington is to blame. Uh, but both sides right now are continuing to dig in their heels. My reporting aligns uh, with exactly what uh, Robert and Kimberly have both said here, uh, the idea of an off-ramp trying to come up with some solution here, understanding that Democrats are not going to budge. The president doesn't want to budge, but his prime objective here is to try Try to make a win to show his supporters, to show his base that he is fighting for this wall. So they're looking for ways for him to try to declare a victory without Congress actually allocating that money. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.